Hello, heroes, and welcome back to um, a little bit something different here as well. I'm just trying out a bunch of different things. Well, I always wanted to do this, but um, well, here I am, and I have a little bit of reason to do this as well. Um, so I'm not that adept at doing one-on-one campaigns, so it helps to write stuff out. Um, this, I'm going to try to do, make it be able to be a one-shot that's able to be transferred into a longer kind of thing. Um, but let me go through the usual stuff I do to make a session, session prep and um, campaign in, in its entirety. Um, this is obviously based off a bunch of other stuff. I think one of the biggest things is probably other DMs, player handbook, and um, lazy DM, that book. Um, so from that, some of the more major big things, at least for session prep, then you know, we can just start off like this and like, add in ideas. What I love doing is um, which helps me add an idea. So I know like, for example, I want to make something that has to do with demon slaying. So I could probably get some inspiration off of um, demon slayer. Um, also, um, possibly Buffy, the vampire. Uh, and other things that kind of where it's someone slaying monsters. But I want to make this unique by following and crafting the character um, from a uh, very, from a very young stage. Um, I have a, um, I like to put different mediums in and try to mix them together. Um, so recently I went forging and I forged some items. So I want to add in the forged item as like a family keepsake maybe I'll let them choose but for example they can have a uh, similar to um, oh, what is it called there's an anime not Demon Slayer but there's another anime with uh, vampires and slaying vampires oh Seraph of the End because um, I've been recently watching that um where there's a, well, it's not exactly the same, but um, somewhere we could do a lost sibling um, taken by a, um, the big bad. Uh, well, I guess, but to do that, I guess, to be able to make it a one shot, I want to be able to, huh. I guess for the one shot though, specifically, I would want to probably start in media race, like in the middle of the action. In media race. Um, maybe the Slayer is, um, has to hunt down um, and kill a coven of, um, oh, um, Coven of Vampires. You know what? Um, the, uh, definitely Supernatural. Watching all that, that's definitely probably playing a big part in this story-wise. Um, so, get more into the nitty-gritty. So, uh, some of the important stuff is a strong start. And obviously, um, oh, these are some bigger topics that we'll fill in. So we'll put, make these headings. So strong start, um, reviewing the character. I like to do that per session, but it'd be good to do pre-session just to look at the character, make sure they fall in the world and like story-wise, since this will be a story more tailored to um, one specific person. Then we have um, 
um, fanta fantastical location locations um, items question mark like fancy items and stuff like that or just some general items well the player handbook has some general items but you know um, depending on how much gold your kit is available in the world the prices have to probably be changed about um, then we have uh, potential scenes so like potentially um, vampire um, kidnapping someone and that's kind of where the why the uh, person's here Ooh, that's a pretty good start maybe that will put them to a um, strong start um, player has been called to the town to investigate investigate a kidnapping to the town to investigate Kidnapping. I know there was um I know there was a adventure that I read about that was similar not not like similar similar to this but had to do with like adventures in a town and well, that had like up to four players so that was a little bit different. Um potential scenes sorry um I like to do enemies and everything I have for background, putting it at the bottom because I like to have the background for the world kind of here. And yeah, I think most of the things can fit into this stuff. Obviously, just add a new thing if you want different um, heading. There you go. If you want different um, columns. I wonder if that is an anime or anything. So, Riff's Pep. You know, it's just Riff's Pep. Um, anyway, so, for this one shot, because ideally for, I think, at least it, in my very small experience of doing one shots, um, it helps for it to be one session and maybe pre-made characters help with the one shot as well so you don't have to craft or just only adding in things that are very specific to um very specific for that campaign so um i know that in the overall background i'm gonna want to have um tons of followers for them to choose um to choose um did I already put the family pendant? Uh, family pendant. I like to have, and I feel, obviously this doesn't work for virtual games. I think when you have virtual games, you know, you use what you can to the best of your ability. So like a really cool thing I think is fun to use is like if you give it a bunch of different PDFs. So like if it's a mystery or a cipher kind of thing, Give them a bunch of PDFs and can use different types of ciphers and stuff like that in that way, which is n nearly much harder to do in person because it's like you want your do you want your players to be looking through a bunch of books like in the middle of D&D while in the middle physical one. Some of the positives for that includes um, things like giving them physical things they can see and hold on to. So like a map, you can give a map, which is pretty good for virtual and physical, but having a map right in front of you it's kind of it's nice also in your miniature looking at that rolling your dice some people like it virtually some people like it physically so obviously the impression but the pendant i want to be able to use this forge pendant big like, here this is your family pendant and i feel like it would add a heavier effect um so next time i'll go deeper into a bunch of all these other stuff but um I just like to drop, you know, what I'm thinking kind of in here. So we're going to need to have, um, I guess, yeah. So we're going to, we know from this, we're going to have vampires. Um, what level do we want this character to be? Probably, you know, I feel like level five 
um, you know, you really get the vibe with you, you really get to feel your character uh, become like hero esque and be able to do hero things. So they're level five, um, and they won't need a level up at all because it's just gonna be ideally a one shot, one session kind of thing. I usually stick to two to three hours worth of session stuff, but um, yeah. Then. Um, I'll go deeper into this next time, um, but, you know, this is probably going to just ideally be a basic story, um, and then later on, if we make this a bigger thing, we can expand into the background, add in more to it, and then ideally what I want to start, um, last thing, um, have child NPC and maybe make the, uh, make them do skill checks. Not like a fail thing, but um, whether they, um, whether to determine, so to determine whether they um, get captured captured as a youngin, um, or get, um, or hide away, and maybe find a teacher, a teacher, you know, um, self-learn or learn from, um, as an apprentice, I think it would be interesting, you know, at, um, especially if this is more single tailor, it would not be able to do with more than, like, three, four players, um, it just gets too boggy, uh, down, oh, oh, and for a reason, how to use the followers, maybe they trust, um, they trust the main person's tactics, but, um, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a default kind of setting, so it's not too much for the one person to control a bunch of different followers. And then, I mean, I love games like uh, Fire Emblem and kind of stuff like that, but teach your own. Um, but yeah, um, I'll see you guys next time and we'll go deeper into these individual headings and, you know, go into testing and making sure one, um, it can really be achieved in one shot. Um, but yeah, thank you, heroes. Um, I'll see you next week with the next part. I hope you guys have a great week and good hunting out there, heroes.